Right then guys, welcome to another episode of Hooked. My name's John Murray and I'm an angling addict. Today I'm down at Raker Lakes. I'm actually fishing the Acorn Lake and I've only come out for a few hours. Just going to be doing a little bomb and bread, bomb and corn and maybe some maggots. Um, I'm not going to put any feed in at all today. I'm just going to be fishing the bomb, searching for a carp. If we get one fish out today, I'm going to consider it a success. This lake's half frozen over. Uh, high bank, which I wanted to fish, is pretty much unfishable. Uh, needed the rope and a weight to uh, crack the ice for probably a good 10 metres out into the lake so that one's a write off unfortunately so we're on Acorn, there's a few people on here um, it's a little bit restricted in terms of how far I can throw but I've picked a line probably about 30 metres out I'm going to start out there, creep my way back uh, and just look for indications on the tip see if we get any kind of movement at all and try and locate some fish don't forget guys, if you enjoyed the videos, give me a thumbs up, consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss an episode every time I upload one. Right, without further ado, let's get some fishing done. Right, so the rig today is quite simply one of these little guru sort of hybrid bombs. Uh, sometimes you can push micro pellets into those, I'm not going to be doing that today. It's quite simply on a running bead. We've got a couple of number 8 stots there, uh, down to a twizzle loop here. And then I've got some 0.15 Preston Reflow hook length material and that's tied off down to a Camazan B911 with a bait spike. Right, this is the sum total of my bait tray, just a handful of corn. The red maggots from last week's session, they're a bit worse for wear but they'll do if we need to put th two or three on the hook, just searching for a carp. And bread. And all we're going to be doing with that bread is punching it out using one of these meat punches. And then we're going to pop it onto the hair. So the bomb I'm using won't be my first choice, but I'm uh, limited on bombs at the moment. I want digging through the shed to try and find any more. And um, basically, I didn't go to the tackle shop yesterday to pick anything else up. So the bread's just neat Warburton's toasty loaf. I've put punched three. I've punched three discs out, and I'm just going to pop my bait spike through those. Pull it back and remove them. There we go. That's what we're going to be fishing. Let's go for it. Alright, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten down to this tip and then I'm going to slacken it off. Really want quite a straight tip here. So if anything comes near that bread, you see the indication on that line. I'm using Browning Senex line. Um, it's low stretch, it's the feeder mono. So a little bit of toes, just added a touch into the tip there. So I'm just going to move it on my rest. So it straightens out again. So it was minus three when I got here and it's midday um, decided not to start until midday I think it was probably about minus five overnight and uh, minus three all day yesterday the chances of catching a carp in this weather are pretty slim to be fair if I don't get any indications where I've thrown in line with the uh, big poplar tree that's on the island in front of me then I'll start to manoeuvre to the right hand side of my swim but I, there's only so far I can go because it's iced over um, I can't go too far left because there are people fishing on the other bank I'm not sure how far out they are fishing so I'm a little bit limited but by going sort of three quarters of the way across to the island I may have the opportunity just to go a little bit further 
provided nobody's throwing out this far. I've not seen anybody chuck anything in this far. I've got quite a bend in the tip there, so I'm just going to back the tension off again. I'm just going to backwind it though. Oh, that's a bite. There's a fish. I can't believe it. We're in. I'm not sure it's a carp, but it's uh, probably a bream. <laughs> oh, just backing the tension off there. And it went round. Just goes to show bread, absolutely deadly. Even when it's minus three out here. Yeah, it's a bream. I'll tell you what though. I will take that today. Happy to catch. Well, that's a great start. I think that might be a kind of hybrid, actually. Hold that up for the camera. I might be able to zoom on that. Is that a hybrid? Doesn't look like a true bream. Let me know in the comments below. Well, how often does that happen? First chuck and a fish. That was lucky. Let's see if we can repeat it. I'll aim at that big poplar on the far bank. Just going to sink the line. That's down. Just move the rod so that we can take the tension out. That's the beauty of these long rests. You don't have to backwind, you can manoeuvre the rod. And that's gone round again. We missed that one. There's a few fish there. They were in nicely. Nice straight tip. A decent angle so we can see the bites. I'm uh, limited on the striking motion here because of the um, I think it's a willow tree to my right hand side here. So it is a bit of a parrot cage again. But when you last down to a venue, you don't get a lot of choice of pegs. Particularly when there's ice over them. I find it incredible that we've not really had any indications, they've just gone straight round. Normally you get a few biners while you're trying to find the fish. Maybe I just drop straight on them. This goes round again, we'll soon know. That looked like an indication there. That's going round. Something on that. Yeah, fish on. You woke up. I think it's another brain. Yeah, another brain. I'm not too worried what they are. We're catching fish. Yeah, I'll take that. That's definitely a brain, that one.
Yeah, I think this is another brain the way this is knocking. Might have to strike it. Or it might have had the bread away. Okay, I'm gonna bring that back. We'll have a couple more goes on the bread. And uh, then we may try the corn. Well, the bread's working so well right now. Might as well get a few fish out on it. That's another indication just developing. Tiniest of movements. There's no rule actually against fishing braid in this lake or at Raker Lakes. So if I'd had a little bit more time to prepare, I mean I only got the gear ready this morning. I was undecided whether I was going to come or not. Um, I'd have probably put the braid on this rod and got even more bite indication, but the Browning Senex line is so good. You know, it is very low stretch anyway. And it shows these bites up. I can see these tiny little movements on this bread. Uh, particularly with this 0.5 ounce tip in this 10 foot browning sphere rod. You know, it's very, very sensitive. Something just having a go at that. We're just, uh, we're just going to wait for it to go around though. Could be a small fish just having a go at the bread. I also thought about bringing some 10 mil ringers boilies just to trim down and pop this bread up a bit, but that's going around. Yeah, let's hit that. Yeah, that fish is on. So we're having to strike these a bit because they are just bream at the moment. And I'm happy to be catching these. Be nice to get a carp out. Like peas in a pod, these bring. Another one. Yeah, so, if you can just see the tip now. It's almost straight, and we can just see those tiny little indications coming on it. If there was any tension in that tip, you'd not see them. And that's going. That's round. That's another fish on. So I don't think we're going to need maggots today. I'll feed them to the robins. Yeah, this fish is uh, just under my rod tip now. So we've not put any bait in, purely the hook bait. We've not done any damage to our swim. Purely taking these fish with the attraction of bread alone. I'm gonna have this cast and then try the calm.
sink that line. That's it. Straight down. A nice straight tip. That is going round already. And there's another fish on. Incredible fishing, considering the winter conditions. Could be a bit better this one. It's rolled up. In the lip though. Can't believe how similar size they are. Right, let's try the calm. We'll go with two greens. So we know there's plenty of fish there willing to have a chew on bread. Whether they'll be willing to have a chew on corn or not, we'll see. So we'll just give it five minutes on the corn. If uh, nothing's doing, I'm just going to go straight back on the bread. So nothing really doing on the corn. So we'll just go straight back on the bread. See if we get a fish. Over time, I'm just scanning the water, just looking for signs of a fish. If I see anything show, a single bubble come up, then I may have a throw over it. Single bubbles can be carp at this time of year. I haven't seen anything move at all though. So we're not getting any indications now either, even on the bread. I'm just going to bring this back, make sure that we're presenting it correctly, we're not wrapped up or anything. All the other bites on bread have been quite instant. Yeah, there don't appear to be anything on the hook, so uh, we'll just compress this bread down a little bit more. I'm just pressing it with my thumb, just to make sure it stays on the hook a bit better. And you can roll this with a rolling pin at home if you want to pre-do it but normally there's not too much issue with it the uh, Warburton's Toasty Loaf or the standard white bread is pretty resilient
too cold without the hood. So if I don't get any indication on this throw now, I'll give it about three or four minutes. Um, probably what I'll do is I'll unclip and add about four meters on. Just go that little bit further out. As I say, I don't think anybody else is throwing out in that direction, so I've probably got all the way to the island. We'll just see if they've backed off a bit. And just look for signs of the tip moving again. I mean, I've had no liners whatsoever, um, which suggests there's just nothing moving about between me and where the bomb is. I think before we do put some extra distance on though, we'll just have a throw across to our right hand side a bit. Just move sort of 10 metres across. See if the fish have moved laterally. I would expect with all the people fishing over to my left hand side that the fish will probably move to the right hand side to uh, seek refuge or back off towards that island or say the island. It's sort of a, a jutting out point on the lake. Just got to keep searching for them at this time of year. That's gone round. Oh, missed it. Don't know how you missed that. I was caught napping a bit there. I think we'll just stick with the position we're in. I thought that bite had gone and I was just starting to think maybe the bread had gone off the hook. See the tension in the tip just takes up with the toe on the lake. So you can just shift that rod left a little bit, take that tension out. Just try and keep a nice neutral tip. There's an indication. Yep. Something just nudging it. That's gone round. We're in. Nice and steady. And there we go, you can actually see those big chunks of bread hanging out of his mouth there. Irresistible. It's on. I'll just move that back. Now whether that fish took 
straight away on the way down or it took because I moved that I thought I don't know but that fish was on Got a bit of battle. Oh, he's not giving up. That's a better one. Not much, but that's a lovely fish. Got to be happy catching them in winter. So I'll bite that time out. I'm just going to move the feeder a foot. The bomb. Let's see if that provokes a bite. Right, nothing. So I'm going to have a chuck. About 10 metres to the right now. In for the. Uh, Poplar, which is sort of the next big tree across. Same distance. So I've just moved 10 metres to my right hand side, aiming at the uh, other poplar tree now. Because we've put no bait in, we can just search around the water. It's 2 o'clock now, so the temperature is dropping, the sun's getting lower. Not that it's really ever got out. I may just try some smaller discs of bread. We've not had a problem so far with it, but because the temperature's dropping, we might just need to downsize a bit. I'll just give this a, another minute or so. See if it comes to anything. Okay, that bite comes to nothing. I'm just going to go with the smaller punch size now, but put four discs on. That's an indication. These bites are definitely getting a little bit more fickle. A little bit harder to come by. If you put any amount of bait in, I think you just killed your peg stone dead today. I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take the line clip off, add a couple of metres on, see if we can follow the fish they've maybe just backed off a little bit definitely still getting signs of fish there but it's slowed right down 
but we'll do that now. That's one. That's two. So then it's dead easy for me to get back to where I was fishing by putting two wheel turns back on the handle and clipping back up. So the bait was still on. Go back on the larger punch size but with uncompressed bread this time. And I just lift it up. So we dangle that in the edge, you can see that that bread floats just on the surface there. So we're fishing about 15 inches off the bottom. I'm back on my original line. Line sunk. Leader on the rest, turn a bit of tension in, hoping any fish will hang itself. It's my right hand is freezing, so I've got it on the hand warmer. Absolutely no sign of anything moving out there. That is an indication though. So two metres beyond our original spot. Just about. Go on, messing about with it. We might have to hit this. Just toes around a bit more. Oh, we missed it. More positive though. So say, it's no good just sort of sitting in one spot, you've got to go and find the fish at this time of year. It's simple fishing, it's just working out where they are. We can creep this bomb out more and more. That's pulling round, that's round, that's a fish on. I'm just adjusting the rest there, it's come a bit loose. So we're back in touch with them. Quite fit these fish at this time here as well. I don't know he's got around the live eighty, you know. Oh, I think he might have. I think he's done around the air eighty. You know what, we've got him. It's definitely towing hard is this one. I'm going to get under my own bank. Oh, lovely. Nice food. It looks like some kind of hybrid. It's uh, a little bit unusual. 
That's a really lean fish. I'm convinced they're not 100% green. Sink that line. Yep, yep, the two ends come together. Rod right on the rest. Take that tension up. Pretty neutral tip. Let's see if we can get another. It's going. Feels a better fish. Heading for that aerator. Certainly not carp. I was having a go. Bowing this one. Tremendous. That looks like more of a true green. Another one. Something on that straight away. Yeah, that's another fish. So going that two meters further out. Put us back in touch with these fish. Coming thick and fast. Those fish are icy. Fingers are absolutely freezing. It's going round. That's it. it. Yeah, there's another one on. Barely in. 30 seconds. And it's gone. It's 
Hopefully she's having the last gasp dash. It's ours. Wow, that's a fit fish. So I've had well into double figures of bream now. Or bream hybrids, some of them. And all I've used is three slices of bread. Get that line sunk. That's it. It's in. A little bit of tension in the tip. Get my fingers on the hand warmer because they are icy. Let's see if this goes round again. Yeah, there's an indication. Tiniest of movements. Probably couldn't even see that on camera. Just a little jag there. Yeah, it's gone. It's another fish. It's a little bit awkward striking in here because of this uh, willow tree to my right. It doesn't feel quite so big, this. It feels more roach like actually. It's jagging around a little bit. But since everything's been a bream, it's probably just a small skimmer. Walk up a bit. Oh, he's trying to get under this tree to me right hand side. <laughs> He's woke up now. Oh, yeah, it is a roach. Nice roach. Nice little roach. Look at these guys. They want my bread. They are tame. The seagulls are going crazy. It's cheeky. You're hungry, aren't you? Want a slice of bread? One for you. We're all with the wildlife fed. And go back to fishing. <laughs> yes, I would say as well. Bite his bum. Not letting you have any. That's a bite. Entertaining as it is. The tip flew around there. Jagged off. Sharp, sharp pull there, and it just came off.
first one we've lost but not out in the swim it's probably halfway back oh seagull <laughs> nearly had him just going around fish on We'll study this time. Yep. This ones aren't gonna like the net. There we go, another skimmer. Took that well down, that fish. So we'll back out. Some indication, it's going round, it's round, there's another fish on. Absolutely incredible that these bream are feeding so well in these sub zero temperatures. The wildlife's getting a bit uh, crazy. The seagulls are <laughs> causing a bit of a hazard, really. Get them down here in front of you and uh, they start to wake up. I've got a swan in my way now for landing this fish. I shouldn't have encouraged them. But I'll just bring him off to this side. Yeah, definitely waking up. You can't eat that. There's another one. Birds on this lake for my liking now. Okay, we're back in. Tips just tightening round. I didn't think there was any flow on the lake this size, but just tighten up ever so slightly. Let's go in. Might as well hit it because it's on. Pulled round, stayed round.
Oh, it's down there, that swan. Ah, that's another lovely bream. Smashing. Another one. There's another indication. Jagged bites, it could be a roach. Not gone. A couple of wary bites on the last couple of casts. So I think what I'm going to do is put another couple of meters on the clip, um, unclip, add two more meters on, and just go that little bit further for this last half an hour or so. So I'm not going to count them back now. Just a couple more meters. See if that makes a difference. Right, well, no bites out on the last two chucks, so I'm going to put uh, four turns or four meters back on, come back onto our original distance, see if we can just tempt a couple more fish. There we go. Yeah, fish on. We're going to add the bail arm over there. So just coming shorter again. Despite not getting indications or liners. And just come back to our original spot. And those fish have moved a bit closer. Probably not getting liners because we're on them. Oh, it's come off. Lost him. It looks like a roach bite that. Three short taps on the tip. Let's go. Oh. Yeah, I think that was a roach. Maybe that was biting, we missed it. It's going already. Again, short tap on the tip. That's pulling round. Yeah, that's it. it. Let's fish on. That feels like a bream. Ones are in the way. Oh, in the tree. Oh, he's under the swan. <laughs> oh dear. Lovely.
got the tension off in that tip. That's round. That's the fish on. From there, the rod just went solid. I don't know if, whether the fish found a snag, but then he jagged at it, it was still on. It felt horrible. It was a slightly better fish, this. Can't see. Is this another hybrid? Oh my goodness. Lovely. <laughs> That's probably one of the better fish today. Check out that beauty. Not massive, well, it's a bit ragged, but I'm happy to catch them at this time of year. Tips going round, happy days. Right guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this episode on bomb and bread fishing. Uh, I was hoping to get a carp out, but we didn't get any of those, but we've probably had the best part of 20 pound of bream out today. So they've all been skimmers. Um, odd better one up to a couple of pounds so i'm happy with that and we've caught it all on just six slices of bread so you know what's not to like about that that's cheap fishing so if you enjoyed the episode you know the drill by now give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit the notification bell so you don't miss an episode every time we upload one and while you're at it why not leave me a comment and share the video as well thanks for watching guys and until the next one tight lines <laughs>